Also, anyone who brought canned goods for the Hernando family and the homeless center in Hernando, they can be put in the basket that's provided at the members center, and that is on the right, on your right hand side as you go out. And don't forget the midweek services. There have started up. Do sign up for the, sh the sheet that's out there on the Welcome Center for your dinner. And the dinner is going to be meat pie with salad and dessert. Sounds pretty good to me. Also, the Tiger Chow Crew shirts will be in the narthex to be picked up for anybody who ordered them. So, I think that's everything I need to tell you. Yes. <laughs> Can we all say amen? We're going to begin the worship portion of our service now and open up our altar as we do each Sunday. Or you can remain in your seats, as most of us do, and just spend a few moments in prayer. Matthew always provides a wonderful prelude and postlude for us each Sunday morning. Our prelude today is titled, We Are God's People. The altar is open. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for being with us here today. What a precious Sunday to honor your kingdom, your glory. We ask for your blessings in our time together, not only in this service, but as we pray each week for the 930 and 11 o'clock hour as well. In Jesus' precious name. And may all of God's children say... Amen. Let's all rise together for the Apostles' Creed. Miss Bonnie will lead us and then remain standing uh, for our first opening hymn of praise. The Apostles' Creed can be found on page 881 if you want it in your book. Otherwise, it's on the board. Please join me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of praise is Standing on the Promises, page 374, verses 1, 2, and 4. It's all Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of Christ my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Sing it out now! Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. If you're standing on the promises of God, then say amen. I know you are. You may be seated on the promises of God now. Please turn your bulletin over, if you will, for our prayer concerns. Praise report, uh, our new staff member, uh, Pastor Mike and uh, Wine, and he is our youth and young family pastor. Uh, had a big reach out, the first uh, football game in uh, Dun Dunnell in high school, and um, and that whole day, reaching out, forming relationships, we were just sharing with Mike uh, about that, and we're just so excited to have him as a part of our team here. Uh, he said there is the opportunity now not only to be the chaplain for the wrestling team, but also possibly the swimming team. So it's just going to be a great outreach, and this is what the, the church has asked us to do this year, is to find ways to creatively reach out into the community to some of our younger folks. So we praise the Lord. Amen. Now, our prayer concerns, Peggy Dial remains in the hospital uh, we've been lifting her up for a number of weeks now, so let's not stop there. She continues to get better, so let's keep her lifted up. Don Gamash had his procedure, and he will have to have more medical procedures in the near future relating to his heart. So let's keep Don in our prayers. He's the chair of our trustees. Bob Burks is over at uh, Crystal River Hospital, one of our members. So let's be in prayer. Grace's uh, husband, Grace runs the forget-me-nots. Um, so let's just keep them in our prayers, if you will. Uh, Karen Hotz is on her mission journey. Uh, she's a member of our church, and she is a missionary. So um, Brother Chip took her to the airport the other day, and so she'll be three weeks on the mission field. So let's keep each week Karen in our prayers, if you'll pencil her in. We had one of our local pastors come by the church this week, Pastor Tom, or Tim, excuse me, Pastor Tim Urshan. Um, his mom and dad ran the Pentecostal church here many years ago before I came here, 
and, uh, and Tim is a pastor as well, and his wife has been very ill, and she went on to heaven, Tim's wife, and so they're going to do the reception after Robert's funeral home this coming Saturday here at our, our hall, and so keep them in your prayers. She was very young, and we just need to seek the Lord. What a wonderful family that is. Saw Pat Martin at Walmart uh, yesterday. Pat said he'd been in the hospital, did not realize that, so let's keep Pat uh, and Joyce in our prayers. And then we have a couple folks have procedures coming up this week and the next week as well. Uh, Ann Saracola uh, has upcoming surgery. Judy Vansher uh, has upcoming surgery. Then we received a note yesterday. It said Tommy Jones, uh, which is Johnny Jones' uh, brother, just moved here, um, had a stroke. And is at uh, ORMC. They were able to get the medication in there right away. So he seems to be doing okay. Johnny's here this morning. So let's just keep Tommy uh, in our prayers. And then the last one that I have, and if you have personal prayer needs, as we mention each week, if you'll just fill them out, drop them in the offering plate when you depart, and they'll go on our email prayer chain. Uh, the last one I have is Hawaii. We want to continue. Uh, Miss Bonnie, if you'll come at this time to lead us, let's keep that, that state in our prayers. And those dear folks, um, just unto the Lord. You've also probably seen in the news that uh, hurricane is hitting Southern California, which they haven't had one since the 30s. Uh, so we, we, need, we understand hurricanes, so let's pray for them as well. Bonnie? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning looking for your guidance and your wisdom. We come to you seeking your grace. Each one here, may we all be covered with your son's precious blood. Let us truly feel your presence and have no doubt if we reach our hand to yours, your hand is there. We but need to do the reaching. Lord, help us, cover us. May we truly be your hands and feet and be a light that people can truly see so that they understand your love, which comes out through us. Sometimes it's very hard to love those around us, Lord. But it isn't our love. It's your love we need to give them. And we can only do that by asking you for your help. Lord, we're now asking for your help for those that Pastor Eddie has lifted up, for all of those that have been on the prayer chain all week, for those that are in the bulletin. You know what each and every one needs. You know. You know the way to reach us. And we know who love you so much that you are always there. Help those who doubt or think that you don't want them. Help them to feel your presence in their life. Help them to know without a shadow of a doubt that you are there. And no matter how bad this situation right now is, there is a way that you have, if we walk the path, that there will be good come out of it. Not necessarily what we think it should be, but what you know in the big picture should be. Help those who are in the hospital. Help those who are in rehab. Help those who are going in for surgery. Help those who are working so hard 
to get home. Lord, we know you have each one of us in the palm of your hand. And you allowed your son to come to earth. And he allowed your will to be done and finished on the cross. And because he died, was interred, raised, and then ascended, our salvation has been paid for, if we will but ask for forgiveness and reach out. So do your work in our hearts. Help us each and every day. And Lord, be with those who are unable to be with us today. May they also feel your presence. We raise all of these things in your son's precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Romans 11, verses 1 through 6. Please rise for the, wor rise for the reading of the Holy Word. And th what's on the board is not wrong. We changed it. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know what scripture says in the passage about Elijah? how he appealed to God against Israel. Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left, and they are trying to kill me. And what was the God's answer to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal, so too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Let us remain standing, if you will, to sing the doxology, singing our praises to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as we bring our offering forward. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all of the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear Lord, we come to you at this time with our tithes, offerings, and gifts. We thank you 
for the many blessings you have given to us. May we bless those we come in contact with. Show us. Put them in front of us so that we know to help. Lord, all these gifts are yours. Use them to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I apologize for the scripture reading to our uh, sound team there. Um, that was the passage I had earlier, and I forgot to send it to you. Brother Steve Willis, our certified lay minister, is preaching at the 930 service, and our lectionary give this time two passages in that chapter. And I said, Steve, you pick the one, and we'll then we'll use that for the other services. So thank you for being gracious, sound team, and I apologize for that. So that is our focus today, is the concept of the opening of that chapter, the word chosen, that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a people, the Bible says, set apart, called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Now, Next service, I do the children's story each week, and sometimes I just have so much fun with that, I just have to share it at 8 and 11 <laughs> as well, or 745. So you're just going to have to bear with me to open up the sermon with the story about being chosen, uh, if I can, and you'll see why it's fun in just a moment here. It's on the topic of our sermon. So put your hands up in the air with me and say, long, long, long time ago, in a faraway place on the Wiflacoochee River, Reverend Bullywing Bullfrog. And what's the bullfrog say? Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Bullywing Bullfrog was uh, working in the committees of their church, just like our church. And Donald the dog, he was over the trustees. Has nothing to do with Don Gamash in our church. But Donald the dog was over the, the trustees. And they chose to have coffee in the outside areas of their church service, just like we have done here recently. And so when he brought that up, uh, one of the big deer, Mr. Buck, said, well, my son Star is, is forming a new coffee called Starbucks. And he said, so I think that they, <laughs> I thought, I don't, you didn't know that's where it came from. I didn't either until I you know, researched the story. And so, you know, maybe we can do this for the church. But as they thought about it, it costs too much. I mean, have you been to Starbucks lately? They cost too much and said, uh, we're not sure that's the route we should go. And then Rosie the reindeer said, I think I can take care of this for our church. Has nothing to do with Roz and our church here. And uh, it just went over with a bang there in that particular area. And I have to tell you that even a song was written about it. So I brought the song with me. That's what I had fun with this week. So bear with me as I share the song, okay? Rosie the brown nose reindeer. <laughs> I lost my place already. <laughs> brown because of coffee stains. <laughs> And if you ever saw her, she could make your coffee great. Then one foggy church day eve, pastor came to say, Rosie, with your coffee so good, won't you offer some chicken wings too? Then how the critters loved her, they all laughed and played. Not only chosen for her coffee, but chicken wangs another day. <laughs> You can see why I had so much fun with that. I will with the children as well as with the uh, 11 o'clock. Chosen, chosen Rosie over Starbuck, okay? What does it mean to be chosen in our passage today? A lot of folks have different ideas on that. Sometimes people say, well, that just seems to sound a little arrogant. 
As we're working through the passages of the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul is dealing with Judaism, the Jewish mindset, and those that we would call today Messianic Jews, those that had come to Christ as the fulfillment of their Old Testament and trying to fit in the society of that day. They always felt they were chosen. And of course, does that mean that we as Christians are chosen as well? Now, the A of our ABCs for our passage this morning, the uh, author, which is the Apostle Paul, he said, let's go first back to Abraham. He said, the promises of Abraham. And if you were here the last couple of weeks, we have emphasized some of the promises that uh, the Judaic faith, starting with Abraham, father of three major religions, um, Judaism, Christianity, and and Islam in the world. And of course, our focus is Christianity, uh, but he is the father of our faith, and we call him that. He has given so much to us, and so the Apostle Paul uses him. He said, I am a descendant of Abraham. I am part of him, so I'm part of this remnant that that I'm beginning to talk to you about in this chapter of the book of Romans. Now, Abraham, let's take a moment here and focus on him. Wonderful things, many things that that he has given to us. Number one, uh, for the passage today, he has taught us how to pray. Do you remember when when Abram prayed when Lot, his nephew, was in Sodom and Gomorrah and they were going to destroy that land and he just stood between Sodom and and heaven begging God to have mercy on Lot and his family. Do you remember that? And how that he said, if there were just 50 righteous men, Lord, would you destroy, you know, that wicked city? And, and of course, you remember the, the conversation, no, if there was 50, we will not. Then 45, 40, 30, 20, all the way down to 10. And I guess in Abraham's mind, there must be at least 10 righteous individuals of, just of Lot's family, you know, in that community. But obviously, there was not. But he taught us how to linger in prayer, to hold on to prayer, to never give up in prayer. Uh, Even when we don't receive exactly what we're praying for, as we've mentioned many times, God always answers your prayers, always answers those prayers. And many times things are not done, I believe, in this world because we don't pray. Prayer is always answered. It just isn't always answered the way that you want it to be answered. Amen? So when you pray, though, you are open up a portal of God's blessings and, and the uh, concept that he has created of our connection with his world and this world, it brings us together. And so it is so vital and so important. Also, Abraham teaches us about tithing, about tithing to the kingdom of God, a spiritual discipline for each and every one of us. Now, I don't mind speaking on tithing um, because, you know, the idea that it's dealing with resources because I believe everybody should tithe. And I, I but it, you know, you have to decide where the Lord is leading you to tithe. It may be to a, a, a ministry a missionary. It may be to another need that you know of. But I know that that's part of our spiritual uh, growth is that God has called us for a percentage of our income and our resources and our time and everything to give to him. And it does something for us spiritually because the reality, and we all know this, is that everything we are, everything we have actually belongs to him from day one. Can you all say amen? So he teaches us about that with Melchizedek that's brought up again, that high priest of his day brought up in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. Uh, as well. So he teaches us about tithing. And then, of all things, you know, some, the, the wonderful children's story and song that came together. Do you remember that? I want to share that with you this morning as well. Um, we used to always sing that in, in kids' gatherings, uh, and it was the idea that we are all part of the family of Abraham being the father of our faith. And it says, uh, we are all sons of Abraham or sons of God, and that includes daughters. It's just that you can't work that into the song to make it fit. So do you remember that? Now, you don't have to do the actions with me, um, but you may want to do it with your hands a little bit here. But if you remember, and the kids love this when we do it with them. It says, Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. And then you use your different motions of your body, right arm, Father Abraham, and you go through it again, and you pick up speed a little bit. 
it. And by the time you get to the last verse, you're moving all aspects of your body. It's a good aerobic workout. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, head up, head down, turn around. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham, and I'm going to stop or I won't finish the sermon. <laughs> they have brought that song to us. You know, there's so much about Abraham in the book of Genesis that is passed on even into the New Testament. So we being part of the chosen generation, we are part of the promises. In chapter 12 of Genesis, it said that the whole world will be blessed from the seed of Abraham and Sarah. The whole world. And we know today that that means Jesus. The whole world is blessed because Jesus has come from Abraham. Can we all say amen? Now, the B of our ABCs, he begins to tackle an Old Testament story uh, that Bonnie read to us a moment ago uh, out of the book of Kings of the great prophet Elijah. And uh, in that story, it says that was lifted up that I have saved 7,000 that have not bowed the knee, you know, to the evil ones. They're my people. They're my remnant. That's the B of our ABCs. They have not bowed the knee. Elijah was struggling in that story. And uh, Paul only gives us kind of a, a, a few moments of that story. But if you remember that story, it's the idea that Elijah had been praying and uh, that the people of God would come back to God, revival like we need today. And so the heavens had been shut for three and a half years, no rain, no rain whatsoever. And so that uh, moment in time that God laid on his heart to pray for the rain to come, he thought would cause a great revival. And a lot of the evil leaders were destroyed. And so when he comes back into Jerusalem, Elijah the prophet, there's no doubt he thought revival was right at that moment and all the people would rally around him, everybody, but it did not happen. You remember when we had 9-11, you know, and there seemed to be revival in our country. But it only lasted a certain amount of time. A crisis usually leads us, if you're spiritual people, to revival. But so many times, human nature, it only lasts a little while. We seem to forget, you know, where we were. And we get back into the regular uh, activities of the day and we forget about God. And so the same thing was happening there with Elijah. And he's dealing with depression. He, Elijah gives me so much hope. Here is this incredible man of God in the Old Testament, and he's dealing with depression. Many of you deal with depression, and we pray and pray, and, and you know, that God would just take it away. How could I ever be depressed if I'm a child of the king? But the reality of human nature is that we all struggle with different areas, and some of us struggle with depression. Elijah did almost to the point of suicidal tendencies, if you know that story. And so he's crying out to God. He said, just take me out of here. He said, I'm the only one left. What's the point? Have you ever gotten to that area in your life? What's the point, God? Why, you know, what would be the reason of me even being here anymore? You know, I mean, there's just nobody else out there that seems to be on fire for you. Nobody else that's hearing the word of God. And it seems like everything I've done has been a waste. I mean, it's an incredible story there. And God reminds Elijah, he said, Elijah, it's not all about you. <laughs> it's not all about your teaching and your preaching and your miracles and the world. You know, I got a world all around you around the globe. And he said, and just in Judaism, I have set aside a remnant of 7,000 that have not bowed the knee to the false idols. And you don't even know them. You don't even know who I'm talking about. You know, and what a wake-up call for Elijah. But God made it clear, and that's what Paul's using the story for, that he always has a remnant. Always has a remnant. We are here in the United States of America, and I believe we, right here in this sanctuary, right at this moment, are part of God's remnant. People that are seeking the Lord. I know there's people seeking the Lord all over the world, but we're part of that. 
And I think today, in this day and age, that's the remnant of God. God always has a remnant. He woos us and he moves in our hearts. And we are to to reach out to him. Now, sometimes even as the remnant of God, we have a way, friends, of opening ourselves up to things that keep us from God. Open ourselves up to temptation. Why in the world do we do that? I don't know, <laughs> but we do, you know, and I'm so glad that God is so gracious and forgiven that, that when we come to our senses, he just, he's always got his hands out there, and if we just grab hold of it, he pulls us back up out of the muck and mire that many times we put together ourselves. Think of the great King David in 2 Samuel chapter 11 in the Old Testament. There's a passage of Scripture came to my attention as I was putting together this sermon. And it says in 2 Samuel chapter 11 that the kings were going off to war. You know, they had to watch the weather like we watch the weather. They didn't have a phone to look at it, but they had their ways. And so when the weather was right, a certain season of the year, then they could go do their conquest, their conquering. You know, I mean, that sounds kind of strange, but they, they had to watch the weather, you know, so the, the, this is the dry season, the rainy season. Okay, now we can go and do what we're going to do. And so it said, when the time came for the kings to do that, which was the, ro- the regular protocol, David stays home. He'd never done that before. Why would he do that? Stays home. He wanted to have bonbons, watch TV, watch ESPN, watch soap operas if it was years ago sitting on the roof, sun tanning. I don't know. He just, what in the world motivated him? But that's where he fell into temptation. That's where he sees the beautiful uh, woman Bathsheba bathing. Uh, you know, they had their, their baths many times on their roofs. So he's up high on a roof so he can see. He shouldn't have seen, but he sees. Did he know that? Is that one of the reasons he, he didn't go? It may be. We don't, it doesn't go into clarification there in the story, but whatever He stayed behind when he should have been out there, you know, should have been doing what he knew he should be doing. What a a great teaching of God that is today. You know in your gut many times what you ought to be doing. And so you know what God's request is of you? Do it. If you know what you're supposed to do, then just do it. Well, do it. Because if you don't do it, you're putting yourself in a place you shouldn't be. And that's just what David did. And we do that so many times. Did God forgive David? Yes. Did he face the consequences? Yes. Did it have an effect on all of God's people? Yes. That ripple effect, it does. It's so important that we live for God, that we worship him in spirit and in truth. In the New Testament, the Gospel of John chapter 4, we have Jesus at the well, do you remember, in his journeys? And the Samaritan woman comes to draw water, and he has the conversation with the woman, and in the midst of that, she comes to know that he is the Messiah. But she is an, a, a Samaritan, and in part of their discourse, she said, you Jews, you know, you say we have to worship on this mountain over here, Mount Sinai, you know, and, but we're here, and, uh, and we, we, are, we worship over here. And Jesus' response back to her said, there's coming a day when, you know, you're not going to worship on this mountain or this mountain. Everybody that truly worships, it will be of their heart, a a true worship of spirit and in your mind and inside of you. That's the remnant of God. That's the remnant of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, the C of our ABCs is simply the word, the title, you are chosen. You are chosen. When I was a boy, a long, long, long time ago now, my daddy taught me how to play marbles. Anybody here know how to play marbles? Our kids don't play marbles today. Now, I've taught my kids, especially my two youngest daughters. We played marbles a number of times, and daddy would play marbles. And back in the 30s, 1930s, uh, when he would play, even some of the men of town, they kept a little bag of marbles too because you, you had your keepers you know, and so, and the way daddy played, there's a variety of way to play marbles is they would just draw a circle in the sand, put your marbles in the center. Some of you may play this way. And then you have your, you know, your uh, shooters and you see if you can knock them out. And if you knock them outside of that circle, uh, just like you're playing pool, um, then you get to keep, if you're playing keepers, you get to keep those marbles. And those were treasured for some people there. Very, very treasured. 
So I thought about that game of marbles. You know, if you can picture that in your mind and that circle, okay? And so many of us are at the edge of the circle because, and we're so afraid the devil's going to knock us out. We're just so afraid of that, you know? Well, number one, we shouldn't be at the edge of the circle, you know, be right in the center because when you're playing marbles, you know, and you're moving around the circle, if you're right at the edge, that becomes a problem. It is, it isn't. But so many of us are right at the edge of sin, right at the edge of struggles, right at the edge of all these areas. Instead of drawing close to the center, the center of God, we're, we're at the edge. Get away from the edge. Get away. Get back into the center of God. Get close to Him again. Even if you feel like you've rejected Him, turned away from Him, sin. It, the, the reality is the devil's trying to convince you to stay out there on the parameters. Get into the center. Just like being in church. That's part of getting into the center. Pray more. You know, seek the Lord more. And just all those things. Read the Bible more. Those, those basic disciplines, they help you get into the center of God's presence. Amen? And so we, we need to do that. So the chosen, this is the Wesleyan thought. My perspective, John Wesley championed the idea of free will, you know. And so the idea is that God's chosen circle, he's made this big circle. Think about the marbles again, you know. And we're all marbles. Don't lose your marbles. We're all marbles. We're in the center of the circle here. How do you get into the center of the circle? The Wesleyan thought is, that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that God woos you, but it's up to you to step into the circle. And when you step into the circle, that circle is the chosen circle. Like I said, there's different theological perspectives, but this is the Wesleyan thought, the Methodist thought, and you step into that circle. And what you want to do is stay in the center of that circle. But the reality of our Christianity is so many of us are all around the parameters, all around the parameters. And, and we just feel like it, that life's scary. It would be so much better, I guarantee you, if you just get back into the center of that circle. Can you all say amen? It really is. And so how do we do that? How do we make sure? I believe the key, at least for your pastor, is worship is worship. There's so many spiritual disciplines, prayer, Bible study, small groups, tithing, uh, ministry to others. Just, there's, there's a zillion things you can do, fasting. But for me, the key is worship. So I want you to close your eyes for just a moment. There was a, a verse out of the Old Testament that in, when I was a boy, in every Methodist church we went to, we would sing it together. Now, I just want you to keep your eyes closed for a minute because I want you to try to picture something beautiful, something beautiful. Take just a moment. Holy Spirit, speak to us. We're experimenting here, Lord, in our prayer. Show us in our mind's eyes something beautiful. I want you just when you see it, maybe it's a sunrise, sunset, rainbow, uh, maybe it's a family member that went on to heaven years ago and you just see their smile. Maybe you see Jesus on the cross. Maybe you see the resurrection. Just let the Holy Spirit guide you to your good place and just focus on it a moment. And then I want you to listen to these words. This is what I sang as a little boy. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before Him. The Lord is in His holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Sing it softly with me as you're focusing on that picture. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. And all of God's people said, Amen. That comes from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. I don't know if you've ever been in a church that did that. We did that every Sunday. 
every Sunday, just as church began. I just, I loved it. I loved it. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth, not just in the sanctuary, the whole earth be silent, reverence before him. Amen. Let me wrap up the message with this today. God has chosen us. I believe God has chosen me. I do. I believe he's chosen you. Um, when I was a, a, a child, I had a terrible accident on a bicycle. I was reminded of this the other day when I had on short sleeves or I had my sleeves rolled up. Can't remember just what. And I lifted up my arm and I have a, a scar, a terrible scar on the back of my left arm uh, from that injury. That's much better than it was over the years. Uh, still looks pretty gross. Um, so I was we were throwing out newspapers back in the old day. You know how we used to deliver newspapers? I don't know if you did that around here, but we did up in Kentucky and bicycles, you know, and make a few pennies. And uh, went down a, a road, a driveway, and car was coming. And I saw it and slid on my brakes. And thank goodness, I believe the Holy Spirit told me to do that, to see it. Because in all the curves there and if not, I would have ridden right in front and I would not be here. So I think I was chosen. I slammed into the side and it, it was a terrible accident because uh, they didn't even see me. And so they never, you know, reduced speed. And so they had to pick me up, knock me out and pick me up off the road. And then, of course, ended up, um, I would say, took me to the hospital in the ambulance, but we didn't have an ambulance up there. We had hearses. So I rode to the uh, hospital in the, uh, the, the local hearse. Uh, that's the way it was set up in our area. Some of y'all probably remember those days as well. And there was a, a number of injuries, you know. And so, uh, and, but I, I, the Lord has brought me through that. I could have died. And I'm sure every one of you have a story like that. You could have died. It could have been you. I love it when uh, Bobby prays for us at the 930 service. He, he usually opens up his prayer, I, just his, uh, his protocol of his prayers. He'll just say, Lord, he said, I'm looking at the prayer names on our bulletin. We could have been there, all of us. We could be one of those names at the hospital. It could be us, but it's not. Not today, at least, you know. I, I love that because I think that God has chosen us. Chosen. I think God has chosen you to be right here for this very moment. And I think we need to see ourselves as God's remnant. We need to see the importance of our lives. And I'm not talking about arrogance. I'm talking about the idea that God has called me. So, Lord, what, do you, what is your desire for me at this point in my life? You know, what do you want me to pray about? What do you want me to do? What are you wanting me not to do? What kind of influence do I have? You know, on all those things, we are chosen. You know, as I've read through the Old Testament, I've been studying the book of Zechariah recently, another great book out of the Old Testament, and I found so many these neat passages, and I read through chapter 3 the other day and just found that passage again that John Wesley's mother used when he was saved out of a fire. If you know the history of, our, of the leader of our denomination, um, he was saved out of a, a, a fire in their parsonage. His father was a pastor, and um, she felt that he was a brand, this is what she said, he was a brand plucked from the fire, plucked from the, from the flames. And that comes from Zechariah chapter 3. Uh, the prophet is talking about us being a remnant and being chosen and those that have been plucked out of the, the fiery furnace, being plucked out. That's where she pulls that from. And she taught him that. You're going to be special, John, because God saved you. Well, friends, that can be said about every one of you. You are special. You wouldn't be here if you weren't special. God is calling on you. There are people in your lives, influences you have, family, friends, that the person sitting next to you will never have. God is using us. Why does he do it that way? Doesn't that get messy? Yes. You know, doesn't sometimes we, we don't we fail? Yes. Why is God doing it this way? I don't know but I know he is. So let's be the people that God wants us to be. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You have been set apart, called out of darkness to proclaim his marvelous light. So the prayer heading into communion is, Lord, what can I do? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what can I do? Maybe I don't feel like I do anything. What can I do? Show me, Lord. 
Maybe you need to show me what I am doing that I'm not even aware of. What can I do for your kingdom? The word says, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. What can I do? In Jesus' name, amen. Our Holy Communion is a wonderful way to wrap up the worship every single Sunday at this hour. And we appreciate you being here with us. Just a reminder again that it is open to everyone. As Bonnie said, I don't think there's anybody uh, new or visiting today. But in case there is, and then sometimes, you know, we've been streaming this service as well. I don't know if you knew that, that we're streaming this service. And there may be some folks watching. You can at this moment, if you will find some bread and some juice. And when we pray over the elements, that will be a prayer for the elements for you as well. And you can take communion right in your home. That's just beautiful. Uh, for us to experience the Lord together. Uh, our ushers and stewards will come up in just a moment, and they will be leading us in our worship. So congregation, I'm going to ask that you remain seated as we sing together one heart that takes us into communion. The first verse, praise and adoration. Second verse actually consecrates the elements. one heart and one mind we praise you with one voice we lift your holy name with one breath the breath of life that only you can give we live in love and will never be the same lord we live in your love and will never be the same with one cup you poured out your mercy your pure heart forgiving all our sin the bread of your body lord you gladly broke apart we open our hearts bring your holy spirit in lord we Open our hearts, bring your Holy Spirit in. We're going to ask those on the sides, if y'all will go ahead and come down the center aisles. Our ushers will direct you and those in the center aisles, if you'll wait to the usher, has you come forward. If anyone can't come, we'll take the communion right to you. The altar is wide open to kneel or stand a moment, and then we'll all take communion together when we return to our seats. The gluten-free bread is up front. The altar is open.
have all received a cup? If you will take the bread in your hands, representing the body of Christ, Jesus, right before he was crucified, said, take the body of Christ, that we call it, and eat and remember me. After supper, he took the cup that represents his life. You know, when the Galilean community that Jesus and the disciples were a part of, they had a, a, a commitment for the engagement when there was going to be a bridal ceremony and a wedding. And the idea of the drinking of the wine was saved. There was a certain cup saved to the wedding feast. And I think that's what Jesus was referring to with this third cup of their dinner. He said, I will not drink it again until I drink it anew with you. What a promise to the disciples and to all of us that there's going to be a wedding feast in heaven for all of us someday. This represents his forgiving our sins. Take and drink and remember our Lord. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for these simple meals, this bread and juice, but it means the world to us. Thank you. And we will sit down someday in the heavenly feast. I cannot even imagine what that's going to be like. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. As we mentioned each week, you can drop the little cups in the receptacles by the exit doors. The offering plates are still there for prayer concerns or offerings as well. Prayer bears out there, uh, we encourage you to take one again. You might say, well, I took one not too long ago. But if you have somebody the Lord has laid on your heart, please take another prayer bear. We always fill them back up. Terry and Janet are so good about that. And there are four new prayer quilts out there. And I was the first to sign all of them last night uh, or yesterday morning. So I would encourage you, please, please, please stop by there, if you will, or our prayer wall and leave your personal prayer requests. Let's all stand together to worship our Lord. Our hymn of benediction is Blessed Be the Dear Uniting Love. And it's found on page 566, verses 1 and 2. be the dear uniting love that will not let us part our bodies may far off remove we still are one in heart joined in one spirit to our head where he appoints we go and still in jesus footsteps tread and do his work below let us remain standing for our postlude today and the recessional 
uh, of the light of Christ. I'll be in the narthex. There's many areas of there for you to uh, stop and visit, and the coffee out there as well. Uh, you're more than welcome to join us. The title of our post loop today is My Life is in You, Lord. Y'all have a wonderful day. We'll see you next Sunday morning.